Now we're talking about global markets. Do American sellers have overseas competition? Do we have people from Russia and China competing against us in the United States? Absolutely. In, uh in any business, there will be competition. Um, today, you know, you know, we are in some ways competing with China on so many things. It it all comes down to really establishing a, a solid brand and a product that can live up to the brand and customer service. It doesn't matter which country you're based in, um, which geography you're working out of, as long as you can really excel in these three areas, I think we can beat any any competitor. Would you say that Amazon is really the best example of this type of company? I mean, they kind of pioneered it. Absolutely. Um, and they've been breaking a lot of new ground. Since you work for a subsidiary of theirs, do you have any insight into their future direction of development? I, I can't share any specifics. Okay. Uh, well, what else can you tell us about this business if someone is, is aspiring to do it? How do they start? Do you begin with the product and try to sell it, or do you... Do you try to identify what the need is? I would start mm. with the customer first. I mean, the, uh, the, the thing that makes most businesses fail is the lack of profitable customers. So you might have a great product, you might have great marketing, but if you cannot get profitable customers, the business is sure to fail. So I would start with customers, find out if there's a need, um, learn as much as, as I can about them. So. Um, one of the things that, that I talk about is not only doing research online, but doing research in the real world as well. So, you know, a simple thing, um, for going back to your example of, of crochet knitting, what I would recommend somebody uh, who would want to get into that, that business would be uh, get a clipboard, write a bunch of questions down, and go and stand outside of Michael's. Because that's where you find your customers. Ask them questions about, you know, how they buy online, um, how they make decisions online, um, what, are the, what are the unmet needs? What would they search for when they would go and search for, on Google? So it's so a combination of understanding customers mm -hmm. and then you know, evolving it into an online strategy. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there's still quite a bit of effort involved in this. It's not like you put up a website and things just start flying off the shelves automatically. It's, you have to put in as much effort as any brick and mortar business. Oh, it absolutely, like. absolutely. There is no shortchanging effort or time. I mean, both of these, you know, any business requires effort and time. Uh, the difference, though, in online marketing is you don't need a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, most, most people think you need millions of dollars to start an online business. That's not true. You need time and you need a lot of effort. So there's no shortchanging effort in any, any, any business. So can you get your website up and running for maybe a few hundred dollars or maybe a few thousand dollars? Absolutely. And, yeah, and in our experience, uh, we've taken a business from concept to profitability with less than $500 a month. And I think that, that, that's a repeatable model. So we can actually do it for more things. Okay. And like, you think pretty much most people can do this if they're sufficiently uh, motivated? Yes. So I think the number one thing is beyond it, uh, the investment of time and effort mm -hmm. is passion. Because it, it takes time and it takes a lot of failure to get it right. So mm -hmm. passion is something that when you wake up in the morning, you go, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try it one more time and I'm, I'm going to figure out how to make this happen. So the combination of Effort, time, and passion is, is really what, what most people need. Great, but it can be done. It can be done. Okay. Do you plan to start any additional companies? I mean, I mean, do you start these companies to make a living, or do you do it sort of to demonstrate that it's possible? I think it's, it's more the latter. Is uh, um, Just the possibilities of, of an online business excite me so much that uh, um, I've been consulting with uh, a lot of my students in terms of how to get their businesses going. Um, I plan to do more of this, but again, it's like I said, it's uh, an investment of time and effort mm -hmm. and finding more time and effort. Talking about uh, spreading knowledge on the web, uh, there's a lot of free stuff. You have things like Khan Academy, which basically tries to provide high quality free education to everybody everywhere. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Um, are there some areas that it's just too hard to make a living in because there's just too much stuff available for nothing? Um, and the question is, what do we need to make a living? Mm -hmm. um, so what, uh, in, uh, let's, in a, let's say you want to quit your day job and you want to wake up at noon every day and without changing out of your pajamas, go to your computer and just sit there until six in the evening and you know, make your living somehow. Right. So uh, my, my first advice to someone who's, who's thinking of quitting their day job is don't quit your day job. Till you can get to a, a scale 
that uh, that that can you know su uh, supplement or completely replace your day job. And it is like 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 you said before, it takes time and effort. Um, now it can be done for with a few hours a day, as long as those hours are spent intelligently, it can be done. So you don't have to quit your day job to do, do something like this. Now, do you think this is going to have a really big societal impact? We've been talking about how it can affect the individual as far as making money online or getting products online. But do you think this represents a fundamental shift in the direction that our whole society is going in, in our redefining our relationships with one another? Absolutely. So if you look at the, the, the last three revolutions that, that the human race has, has encountered, so the agricultural revolution was farming and close communities that were supporting each other. Then came the industrial revolution, automobiles, textile industries, which was big corporations, um, and employees spent an entire lifetime, and then, then they had pensions. Now we are in the midst of this technological revolution where um, more and more companies are asking employees to be more independent. For instance, you know, work remotely, manage your own retirement in things like 401ks, so pensions have gone. I think the next generation of employees will be completely virtual and on demand, where um, you can start a business with a virtual set of employees. You can pick and choose the best of breed to do exactly what that's, what's needed, and then they, then, then they move on and do what they need. And I think it's going to be great from a workforce standpoint as well, because as a, an, a, as a freelance independent workforce, I can choose to work when I want to, choose to work for who I want to, uh, and just hone in on my skills. So you're right, it's, there's going to be a tremendous shift in the, in the next few decades in terms of how uh, society evolves as well. Can we assume that this technology is always going to be stable? I mean, it's dependent on the power grid, it's dependent upon a lot of things, it's dependent upon introduction of new technology. Uh, there are probably a few critical pressure points that could bring a, a catastrophic system collapse if they were pressed. Do you think we need to worry about that, abandon our own ways and just plunge into this headlong, or is there a risk? I, I wouldn't worry about that, um, because the world moves on technology today. And so if, um, I, don't, I don't think any, uh, any human being can survive without technology in some way or the other, either cell phones, um, or the internet, uh, or TV, or, or any other medium. So. If there is some catastrophic event, I think we'll have a lot more things to worry about. Well, that's a pretty optimistic way of looking at it. Uh, it looks like we are heading some, for some amazing changes in the world, and I'm looking forward to see what they look like. Now, I've just gotten the signal that we're about out of time, so we are going to have to wrap the show. I'd like to thank you for being here today. I've been speaking with Mufi Gadalia. I think I pronounced that correctly. Yes. Gadiali. Okay. Um, online entrepreneur, adjunct professor at Stanford, working currently at Lab 126. Good to have you. Thank you for watching. I'm Marty Wasserman. Visit us at www.futuretalk.net. See you next time. Hey, good job. Awesome. <laughs>